like we have a number of very insightful questions so inshallah I want to try to um, address some of them specifically and then I hope that you know what we talk about will address others as well that we won't get a chance to get to essentially a lot of questions are asking for practical everyday sort of tips of how to achieve these things um, one question asks about what's the best way to find taqwa. Uh, another one asks about um, what is your advice for someone um, who makes tawbah but commits the same sin again. So repents but then commits the same sin again. Another one asks, can you give small steps that we can take every day um, slash week in order to polish? So, you know, addressing these sort of everyday type uh, practical things that we can do. Uh, another really good question also um, along those lines, um, many of us live very hectic lives with 70 hour work weeks, family commitments, etc. And the urgency of the day um, today can be overwhelming. Have, um, okay, how can one find spirituality when one feels that they only have time for the basics, five prayers and Quran recitation? All really great questions and related to each other. First of all, I want to address the question of the tawbah. Um, tawbah means to repent or to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Practically, what does it mean? Uh, practically, scholars have said that there are three requirements and sometimes four requirements for a repentance to be accepted by God. The first requirement, thank you. The first requirement is well, you need to feel a sense of remorse and pain over what of what has happened. And I can give you a little example about that. If, if somebody hurts you and one person comes to you and says, um, you know, I'm really sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry, okay? You're a lot less likely to forgive that person than another person who comes and says, you know, I am so sorry that I hurt you. Because in one, what's the difference between the two people? They both said sorry. But one person actually feels remorse and pain over what they did. And the other one doesn't really seem like they care. So when we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, Astaghfirullah, 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 Astaghfirullah. <laughs> That's not very convincing. It's not, repentance is not an act of the tongue. Repentance is not an act of the tongue, it's an act of the heart. So if you want to repent, you want, I mean, just like your friend is not going to accept your apology if you have no remorse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in order for our repentance to be accepted, we need to feel a sense of remorse over what has of what we've done wrong. So remorse. The other, the other requirement is that we stop doing the sin as much as possible, right? So um, if I want to repent for a sin, I, I need to feel pain of it for it. I need to feel remorse, and then I stop doing the sin. It's not sincere to to really say that. Um, that I'm repenting if I'm simultaneously continuing to do the sin. Um, and then third, we have to have the sincere intention not to return to the sin. Now that brings us to the question of what happens if you do end up returning to that same sin? Well, again, that's um, when you, know, you, would, you, would, you would go back to the, but, but originally if your intention is not to return the sin, Allah knows your intention. But if you end up falling into the sin again, then you can repent again. We have to remember who we're dealing with. Like we're not dealing with um, our friend or our mother or our father who has a certain limited amount of tolerance and forgiveness. You know, you, you can only hurt the same person so many times before they get sick and tired of forgiving you, right? Can't keep doing, can't keep vandalizing someone's car again and again, and every time you say, Oh, I'm really, really sorry, and they forgive you, and then you do it again, the same exact thing, and then, Oh, I'm really, really sorry. No matter how forgiving that person is, there's going to come a point where they're sick and tired of forgiving you, right? The forgiveness runs out. That doesn't happen with Allah. That's something we have to understand. There's no running out of forgiveness, there's no running out of mercy. And to believe that there's a limit to God's mercy is actually a sin in and of itself. Because Allah says, Rahmati wasi'at kulli shayin, that my mercy encompasses everything. There's no limit to God's mercy. And you can take all the sins that you've committed along with all the sins that every other human being 
has ever committed from the beginning of time till the end of time, and then put it next to God's mercy, and God's mercy is still greater. We have to remember that. So we can always come back to Allah, and it's only shaitan who wants us to believe that it's too late to come back to Allah, or that we've done too much. Because it's one thing to feel remorse, and it's another thing to feel despair. Despair is from shaitan. Realize that. Don't think that, you know, oh, you know, you just give up and you say, well, there's no point anyways. There's no point. I'm too far. That's from shaitan. We have to fight that because we have to know that God's forgiveness is, is boundless. It's endless. So you can always come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again and again. And there's no amount of sin and there's no number of frequency of sin that he can't forgive. In terms of daily things, now this is a very valid point, that we live these busy lives, right? We have work, and we have school, we have family, we have our friends, we have all this, and not to mention all the gadgets, right? Like 10 million different gadgets and different things that we have to check into and check and send and you know what I'm talking about. So there's so many distractions. How do we stay focused in that ocean of distraction? The answer is, you know, um, if you go to a doctor, I'm, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've been, I kind of got really sick yesterday, and um, it just hit me all of a sudden. Um, fever, and like, oh my goodness, my throat was like so much pain. Uh, so I, I needed antibiotic. But basically, when you go to a doctor with a problem, the doctor will give you a prescription. And you have to follow that prescription in order for it to work, right? So if the doctor, in my case, doctor told me I have to take four, it was a pretty high dose of, of this medication, four pills twice a day, okay? Now if I take that prescription and I say, you know what, I don't really feel like taking it twice a day, I'm just gonna take it once a day. Or you know what, I'll take all eight one, at one time. What's gonna happen? Well at best, it's not gonna work. And at worst, I'm gonna actually harm myself. I'll overdose, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gives us a prescription. In the five pillars is a prescription. It's a prescription Allah has given us in order to, in, in order to cure us, in order to heal us, in order to, to give us, for us to be successful. So for example, when Allah comes and says that we need to pray five times a day, at particular times, and I say, well, you know what, actually I'm busy at 12, or I'm busy at 1, or I'm busy from 12 to 5, so I'm just going to pray after 5. It's like the person who's taking the medication prescription and saying, you know what, um, I'm just going to take it when I feel like it. We can't act that way with our prayers, with the prescription of God, and expect it to work. Does that make sense? Allah's given a particular prescription because He knows best how to take care of His creation. So at the very minimum, we need to follow the prescription. And one of the most, you know, obviously the daily prescription that Allah gave us is the five prayers. First and foremost, and I, and I don't know specifically, you know, I know this person said they have time for the basics. <laughs> um, that, that, they, that he has time for, the, he or she has time for the basics. But one thing that we don't really recognize is the importance of timing. We might be praying five times a day, but if we're not praying on time, and I'll explain what I mean, on, just, just so it's very clear what I mean by on time. For every prayer, there's a window of time. So Fajr has a window of about an hour and a half, from Fajr until Shuru. And then Dhuhr from Dhuhr until Asr, and then Asr from Asr to Maghrib, Maghrib, from Maghrib till Isha, and then Isha, from Isha, some say till Fajr, some say till an earlier part in the night. But the point is that there's always an interval of time for the prayer. If we're not praying in that interval of time, then we're messing up the prescription. We're not actually taking the prescription as it was intended by the doctor. And so it's not going to work. We will not be able to stay focused, and we will drown. Do you guys ever notice, like, there's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spread the prayers out throughout the day. Like, I mean, we could have prayed all five in the morning. Could have prayed all five in the evening before we sleep. Some people actually do that. 
<laughs> That's not what we're supposed to do. Um, like when they come home from school, or like all the you know, like turbo, turbo, turbo. <laughs> you know, it, it, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala prescribed it so that it's spread out throughout the day. Can you guys think of what does that do practically in your life when you have to stop, you have to pause, whatever it is that you're doing, and you have to go back and refocus. And you do that five times, at least. So it doesn't matter what you're involved in. You're in class, you're studying, you're with a friend, you're in the middle of a very heated discussion, you're sleeping, you're watching a really interesting basketball game, whatever it is you're doing, you're, you're, you're at the mall, whatever it is, no matter what it is, you pause, you pull away, and you refocus. So what that does, is it naturally makes it so you don't you can't get too engrossed. You can't get too sucked in without having to disengage and re be reminded of your actual purpose. Is this making sense? If we follow his prescription as he gives it to us, within the prescription is a natural way, I mean within it is a way to, to keep focused. How can I get too caught up with my work if I have to leave it every two hours and go pray? I can't get too caught up. But the problem is when I'm not doing that. And instead, I'm, I'm, I'm not pulling away for six hours straight to remember God. So just, just the prayer alone is a way to do that. Beyond that, and, and, then, and then there's the issue of khushua, right? Focus in our prayers. Unfortunately, most of us, even if we're praying, we say Allahu Akbar, our body is doing a lot of different motions, but our heart and mind are somewhere else, am I right? We say, we say Allahu Akbar, but we're thinking about our exam, we're thinking about what we're studying for, we're thinking about what someone said to us, where we're going, what we're gonna wear, whatever it is. Whatever it is that we're thinking about consistently in our prayers, let that be an indication for you of what is occupying your heart maybe a little too much. I don't know if that makes sense. If there's a particular thing which is always on your mind during your prayers, it may be that that thing is a false attachment for you. That that thing is too, you're giving too much focus to that thing. And then the last advice I'll, I mean, I'll leave you inshallah for you and for myself. One of the best ways to focus on God in your prayers is focus on God outside of your prayers okay. because you know what whatever you think about most outside of your prayers is the same thing you're going to think about inside of your prayers if it's another person guess what that same person is on your mind when you're praying if it's your job guess what that's what's on your mind in your prayer if it's your career or it's your school or whatever it is so if we really want Allah to be on our mind in Salah, remember him outside your prayers. And that brings us to the other question um, of kind of like daily things that you can do to polish your heart. One thing I want to add also in terms of like this hectic lifestyle that we live and all the distractions. I want to really emphasize the five prayers. I want to emphasize praying them on time. I want to emphasize working on your focus, but I want to add something also to that, and that there's this special time of night that we're told about in the hadith. It's the last third of the night. This is the time of qiyam, or tahajjud. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that during this part of the night, it's the last third, which means about two or three hours before fajr comes in. That during that period of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down to the nearest heaven. Allah is nearest to us during that time of the night. And Allah calls out and asks, who is calling on me so I can answer their call? Can you imagine, like, even if it were a king or a president, coming and saying, "Who's okay, who, who wants something from me? Right? So I can give it to them. But this isn't a king or a president, it's the Lord of the world is saying that. But the problem is we were sleeping during that time. He is calling out and we're sleeping. Which is really 
interesting because if I told you that there was a check 